Hi there, Grant K here from the Smoke Learning Channel. In the previous video, you went through the installation process for Smoke. Now before you get started creating your own project, let's take a look at an example project so that you have a detailed tour of the redesigned Smoke interface. The first item to point out is the menu bar at the top of the screen. This will give you access to all basic functionality such as importing, exporting, generators, interface layouts as well as preference and help menus. The contextual menus are available throughout the interface by right-clicking at the cursor's location. Smoke's working environment is called the workspace. Since only one project may be opened at a time, the workspace contains the current project's media and sequences. Smoke's interface has been designed to take on the everyday tasks you may encounter. These tasks have been divided up into specific tabs located at the bottom of the interface. For this build of the pre-release trial, there are currently two tabs available. Firstly, you have the Media Hub tab for media management tasks. This includes media importing, exporting and timeline conforming from other applications. The formats supported are XMLs from Final Cut Pro 7 and Final Cut Pro 10, and the AAFs from Avid Media Composer 6 and Adobe Premiere Pro. And finally, you have the Timeline tab for all your editorial and effects creation needs. You can simply switch between these windows to call out the appropriate tasks. Now one item on the interface that all tabs have in common is this window located to the left of the interface. This is called the Media Library. The Media Library is the equivalent of a bin or folder where you can store your media and sequences. You can have as many folders as you like as well as arrange them in any order you choose. Please note that you have various display and settings options for the Media Library located at the bottom of the window. One common menu located in every section of the interface is the Gear menu. This menu contains various operations particular to that part of the Smoke interface. Since most of your creative work will be done with the Timeline tab, let's focus in here for a few minutes. The standard Timeline view has been designed for ease of use and you will notice the similarities from what you have been used to in the past. You have the Media Library on the left, the top half of the screen is for the viewers, and the bottom half of the screen is for the Timeline view which contains one or more sequences. The viewers can be displayed in various modes. These modes can be interchanged in two methods either using the drop-down menu here to change the viewer display, or alternatively you can swipe to the right of the screen to bring up the viewer selection menu and you can choose the appropriate viewer. All viewers can be resized by dragging on the dividing line between the viewers. Zooming and panning the image is also possible using the drop-down tool selection as well as keyboard shortcuts. You also have access to the various viewing options so that you're able to use everyday functionality such as action safe and title guides. Below the viewers are the scrub bar, the navigation controls and the various timecode indicators with their respective buttons. Beneath the viewers is the menu bar. To the right of the menu bar you will find insert overwrite and replace edit buttons. Note that the drop-down menu contains more auxiliary edit functions that you can access at any point during your edit. The timeline display will give you a visual representation of your sequence. You can have multiple sequences open at any time and they are switchable by clicking on the tabs above the timeline view. All sequences are represented by the red highlight on their respective tabs. The green highlight on the first tab indicates that you are able to see a source's timeline. 
This could have applications during the editing process, such as adding an effect to the entire source clip before editing it. But for the most part, you will stick with the red tabs to see your edited sequences. The buttons located to the top right of the timeline view define your editorial control such as trim modes, ripple and snapping. To the left of the timeline tracks, you will find the patch panel for track assignment as well as track muting, track locking and track sync locking. Finally, you will find auxiliary timeline controls below the timeline view. This includes audio display functionality as well as timeline display options for fitting the sequence to the timeline window in various ways. Now let's move on to the next video where you will learn to create a new project and new user to continue your smoke experience.